Today I want to look at the iceberg. Who has seen this iceberg in other classes? Yeah, yeah. It's a standard way of look, trying to find root causes uh, of behavior. You know, it, it, and we're going to look at this again. Um, it's a it's a tool that you can put on as a pair of lenses to look at the world and ask yourself, you know, why, 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 why. So that that's the purpose of this iceberg is to look at um, what happens below the water level. You know, the events are the things that we see in the world that happen above the water level, uh, and sometimes we react to events. Uh, and so, and, and we really never change anything if we're continually react, reacting to events. If we can, uh, over time, find out the cause of those events down to mental models, perhaps we can begin to change things by changing our minds. You know, the root cause is always below the water level. And the iceberg is presented because, as a metaphor, you, you often sometimes see this as a, as a pyramid just because it's the same structure. But as we dig deeper, asking the five whys, we need to get down to the root, the root causes, which is always the way we think. Changing the way we think is the most effective way of changing the world, and it's also the most difficult thing to do, changing the way we think. And so systems thinking looks at those lower levels, at those patterns of behaviors and systemic structures and mental models, which I'm going to describe very briefly to you. The pyramid uh, is a simple tool um, that I look at as a, as a lens. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't tell you what to do, but it tells you uh, a little bit more about why things are happening the way they're happening. Why is it, for example, that for 10,000 years, humans have used war, used violence to try to stop war? Um, and we look at the mental models that cause that, um, we may be able to begin to understand why we are uh, continuing to make the same mistakes over and over again. So the events. The events are things that happen in the world. These are events are actually simple, discrete um, uh, things. Sometimes they're simple things, sometimes they're horrific. Uh, but they're uh, individual um, Examples of, of behavior, of human behavior. Um, one of the, for a, um, the example I used was the, uh, the recycling bin here last week. Uh, a individual event might be, I put uh, an item in the recycling bin. A pattern of behavior is we all put uh, pat, uh, uh, items in the recycling bin. A structure is the recycling bin. Without the recycling bin, it's very difficult for those patterns to exist, right? And there's mental models that underlie the creation of that of that recycling bin. When I was in school, there were no recycling bins because we didn't think about that. We didn't, the way we think affects how we create structures, what correct structures we create, and how we behave. So a traffic light down on, on Route 9. A traffic light there is a structure. It creates a pattern of behavior of people stopping. And the mental model is we should, be able, we should stop uh, at traffic lights. Uh, if you travel in Asia, that's not a mental model that often exists. You know, the uh, model in, in Indonesia, where I'm driven, uh, is every person for themselves, you know, and, and it's just a free-for-all, you know. Uh, it's a mental model. Here, the mental model suggests that we should stop at traffic lights. The structure is both the traffic light itself, as well as the laws that prevent you or that uh, penalize you when you don't st stop at traffic lights. And the mental models are perhaps we can all be better, better off being safe and paying, paying attention to some rules, uh, it's good for all of us. And so these definitions begin to help us understand the relationship between events, patterns, structures, and mental models. And if we're going to create change, it's not going to be at the highest level of the event. It's not going to be at the reaction to events. It's going to be about changing mental models. And so here, the university is a system, right? Uh, a university is a system that is based on a particular mental model of a hierarchy, of a power over hierarchy. That is, there's uh, people who have more power than you, and you have more power than others, you know? And that mental model, uh, that hierarchical mental, mental model, which is true for corporations and for governments and for the military, is endemic in our world. It's part of the world we live in. And anyone who questions that mental model is perceived to be crazy, right? Because that's the way it is. The first uh, human hierarchy that I could identify um, came from uh, the Hebrew Bible. And it came from um, uh, marching Hebrews across the desert. And Moses said, um, I'm having a hard time uh, uh, making decisions for everybody. And, um, and his, his father-in-law, um, Jethro, I believe was his name, he said, what you need to do is have the one rule the 10, the 10 rule the 50, the 50 rule the hundreds, and the hundreds rule the many. It was the first identified construction of a human hierarchy that's based on this, uh, this power over mental model. And it is part of the world we live in. And it's represented by what we're doing today. I have power over you. And you are here to listen. And so if, if our mental model of education is um, you are here to absorb information from me and then regurgitate it back in quizzes, that's a power over mental model we're all very familiar with. In this class, what I try to do is share with you some ideas on Tuesday and then bring them together and help us share with each other on Thursday. That mental model is very powerful. So the event is a student walks in a classroom and takes a seat facing the teacher who always stands at the front of the room waiting patiently for everyone to be seated. 
The pattern is lots of people do this, and lots of people do this for thousands, for a thousand years, since the first universities that came out of the, uh, of the um, monasteries in Europe, in, in, in Milan, and Paris, and, and, uh, uh, and uh, in Germany, um, where this has been the pattern of behavior, of, of human behavior in, uh, in, uh, in education for a thousand years. And this is a representative of the structure. So the structure is, you all came in this classroom, and the structure of this classroom is the expectation you'll sit and look at me. On Thursday, you come in and you change the structure based on a different kind of a mental model. We do an um, example here of the, using the iceberg. Again, the iceberg is a, an event. Is I rode my bicycle to school today, which I didn't do today because it was raining, but I often do this time of the year. Um, the pattern of behavior is I ride my bicycle to school most days when it's not raining. Uh, the structure is that allows this to happen is certainly the bicycle. The bicycle is a necessary structure. But the bike lanes, the bike paths, the bike racks, um, the, the lock that I use, uh, these are all bike racks on buses. These are all structures that we've put in place suggesting making it easier for these patterns to exist. The mental models that underlie that behavior are ways of thinking. And so I'm concerned about the environment. My health is important. We'd like to save money. Uh, I'm be a role model for, for other people, you know. Um, these are these are, these are ideas, concepts, they're stories we tell each other about the world that result, result in structures being built, certain patterns of behavior, and individual behavior. This is the, this is the uh, purpose of the iceberg. 